<laughs> Hello, kiddies. It's your old pal, John Cassier, the voice of the Crypt Keeper, and you're listening to Video Store Clubs Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the store. Oh, hello, Internet. Damn, you're looking good today. It's a good time for you to be here because our Oktoberfest Scarefest continues on the Video Store Clerks podcast. Oh, we got a good one for you tonight because tonight we'll be discussing the Kane Hodder, Robert England, Tony Todd, the horror movie made by horror fans for horror fans, Hatchet. Once again, this is the Video Store Clerk clerk's podcast i'll learn how to talk hopefully by the end of the show but i'm dave i'm mike i'm chuck <laughs> all right and we're all here for you tonight let me open are, are we chat uh, where's chad but wait a minute Chad. what what's going on here i i don't know i i, I oh wait wrong way he went on one of those swamp tours. I fucking told him not to, and he went anyway. And I, thought, I haven't seen him since. I thought those were illegal now. Oh, shit. I don't know. He must have found some dark web underground type shit, and he went. He paid his 40 bucks, and he fucking went. We haven't seen him since. God damn, Wait. man. It's crazy. Wait, he paid 40 bucks? Uh, yeah. Didn't you? God damn it. Well, anyway, we got all kinds of good stuff for you planned in this wonderful evening of the Video Store Clerks podcast. Once again, we'll be talking about Hatchet. We'll have a random clip of the week, among other shenanigans. But we will start the program as we always do with the news. Live and direct from your mom's anus, it's the news, video store clerk style. I like to eat candy corn one color at a time, if you're really getting OCD you're a about it. Well, I'm not always a nibbler, I'm kind of a gobbler. <laughs> <laughs> I eat a lot of candy corn. <laughs> She's a gobbler. <laughs> well, tonight we'll start with the box office. Take a wild, take a wild freaking guess what number one was. Oh, we know who it is. It's Swifty. It's the T Swift that brought in ninety-two million dollars on its opening weekend. God. She has a movie. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. It's First, like some tour documentary type thing yeah. like another uh, okay uh, yeah like a, literally, another literally. concert movie yeah literally she could put out anything and it's gonna fucking oh, yeah. put number one. Oh, man. It's <laughs> so it worked um and much to my surprise the exorcist believer uh hung on to the number two spot i thought it was going to drop a lot more than that but it didn't it had 11 million dollars a very 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 distant second Tis the season. Yes, tis the season. Paw Patrol came at number three <laughs> with 6.9. 69, dude. <laughs> What's that Sorry. Mean? I'm 12. No, I mean. Wait, what? Uh, saw number four, and the creator continues to bomb with $4.3 million. And we do finally have some worldwide totals coming in. World wide uh barbie and the super mario brothers movie are neck and neck with an amazing 1.4 billion dollars being made um i was curious about this one as to how this one would do overseas but oppenheimer came in at number three won 942 million dollars so it did way better overseas 
than it did here. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, 845. And believe it or not, Fast X has the number fifth spot at $700 million. Gross. That's why there's 10 of them. That's why there's 10 of them. So that's your box. Oh, gosh. You know, I hate this every week. I, I like to give happy news. Yeah. Happy news. Happy. Happy. Uh, Suzanne Summers, ladies and gentlemen, passed away after mm. a long, long battle with cancer. Over 20 years, I, I believe she was um, battling um, cancer, and she died a day before her birthday, yeah. October 16th. She passed away at the age of 76. Uh, so I do believe Joyce DeWitt's the only one left. I believe so. So Which Now on to... Um, she was the one that worked in the flower shop. Didn't she recently pass away? Joyce? I, I don't yeah. believe so. Well, she did. I think she, there's one. I, I think everybody dies when they have it, so I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. so, but for some reason, I thought she did. I could be completely wrong. I don't know. Fact check, fact check us, internet. Internet, oh, fact Joyce, check us. Joyce DeWitt isn't dead yet. No. Okay. I, I didn't think so, but I, I second guess myself with those things anymore. Uh, exactly. So on to some happier news. <laughs> Come and knock on our door. Hey, uh, what was that? What was that one? Love that show. We've been Love waiting that. for you. Yeah. In the kisses are heard. Now that song's gonna be stuck oh, in my yeah. head. Hey, right. uh, another, another 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 thing sad happened was uh, Jeff Burr, who uh, made uh, Stepfather Two and Leatherface. Leatherface. Six chance on Master Three passed oh, away. Four five. Five. Oh, Master Four and Five uh, oh. passed away as well here recently too. We gotta throw oh. that out there. So yeah. yeah, we lose it a lot of greats. Mm -hmm. I feel like what they're dropping like flies. And I don't know what that was. Did you guys hear that? I heard Did you guys hear that? Daddy. Oh. Daddy. What the fuck? Daddy. Oh my gosh. What the, the legend is that? true. The legend is true. Ah. What the fuck is that? Our special guest star tonight, Vic. <laughs> Whoa, careful with that thing. Careful where you're pointing that thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was I was just about to try to deliver some happy news and a fucking axe wielding psychopath walks out the door. So there yeah, we go. And <laughs> a Miami, a Miami, Florida fourth grade teacher accidentally showed her students Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, blood and honey. <laughs> I saw that. Winnie the Blue. Uh, needless to say, parents have been about outraged. Yeah, That's it's funny. been so bad. <laughs> That's what it is. They're not even worried about the violence and like the pointless, like you know, gore. How does that, that even happen? So you didn't see, you didn't see the box. You didn't see the title. The title screen comes up. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. You didn't ask any questions. No oh my questions. god! I mean, I would say that, 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 that all the kids that were probably in that class these days, their parents are us. So it's like. They probably like I would have been just like yeah, but it was too bad. Yeah. It's They're just like, too yeah. bad. Yeah. Show them something better. And finally, the one and only John Carpenter did a Q and A at the New York City Comic Con recently, and one of the questions was asked: Why can the shape Michael Myers never die? His response, and I quote: Well, I'll tell you what. He's an all-purpose character. If you want the first movie, you've got that. If you want them to be able to kill all the time, you've got that. The only other all-purpose monster is Godzilla. Arr! <laughs> I don't know. I took pleasure in uh, Michael Myers being compared to Godzilla. So. Godzilla. Uh, that's a weird thing for him to say, but it's okay. It's John Carpenter. <laughs> John Carpenter's yeah. come up a lot lately. Like, yeah, I mean, because me, me and Dax have been watching a lot of John Carpenter lately, and uh, I checked out his newest uh, his new show on 
Peacock, or is it, is it Peacock mm-hmm. or something? Yeah, uh, where it's like it's really weird. It's like he's directing. It's like it's like a cold case files thing where like you know, weird shit happened to people and they're on there, but there's also these dramatizations that are like ten times better because John Carpenter did them. Like it's kind of crazy. It's pretty cool though. Now, so, uh, now, uh, did John Carpenter happen to give this speech before or after this photo? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good photo. There's Dave, and uh, the master. There he, is, there he is in the background himself, John that's Carpenter. Good. This weekend at New York Comic Con. That is fucking sweet. The video store clerks were on the scene. Yeah, you were. So just today, my dad goes to me, was that John Carpenter sitting behind you? I was like, I love you, dad. We can be friends. That's pretty pretty fucking cool. I mean, the guy is like the master. We were talking last night about how he doesn't have a bad movie. Like mm-hmm. there are many movies you prefer over others, but none of them are bad. Um, you're not called bad. No. So I mean, that's fucking cool. You were this far away from the fucking master. From greatness. Yeah, they had uh, they have a setup. It, it, Dren Productions is, is the company that does all the graphic novels and everything that uh, Carpenter's been producing lately. So uh, you can go and check that out and see uh, some of his uh, written works of art as well. They had they had a cool very cool setup. They had uh, displays, uh, props from uh, they live. They had the uh, the books, actual books they used in the Mouth of Madness, the Sutter Kane oh, books. Sutter books. You could, yeah, they were they were available for purchase. Only thirty five hundred dollars for the set. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, eh. <laughs> what's in those books? They're just blank pages. We couldn't I'm see not it. Sure. Mm-mm, I'm not they sure. Were, they were displayed in a case, so you could only see the covers. So it, it, it might just be blank guts. I wish they would have actually like just had somebody write the book, write, write, the, write books the books. Yeah. yeah. But what they should have done is they could have had just like a special guest, like horror author, write it every you know every book. But you never know who it is. It's just always Sutter Kane. Do you read Sutter Kane? I totally would. Do you? Mm-hmm. Me too. <laughs> well, that, that's it for the news. It's so short because, like I said, I tried to find happy news. Everything else is kind of a bummer. <laughs> that's a bummer, dude. It's a bummer, dude. Nothing is fucked, dude. Nothing <laughs> is fucked. Never. All right. So you ready to move on there, uh, Mr. Crowley? Sure. All right. Hatchet. This is very uncomfortable, by the way. It, it, Wait, there's no it, more it, news? Oh, that's it. That's all, that's all the happy news I can find. <laughs> what about the goddamn strike? <laughs> well, it, because it, that's not... I don't know if that's happy. I mean, it's happy news. No, but I'm saying as far as news goes, fucking... Well, okay, we can Negotiations. Negotiations um, have been halted. Yes, they fell through because um, if... You were optimistic like me. Okay, the the writer strike signed, sailed, and delivered. That's great. So the actor shouldn't be too far behind. Well, wrong. Um, all the talks have fallen through. So it looks like the writer's strike will continue for some time. Unfortunately, happens. See, see now the whole now see the whole yeah, news has been brought down. Well, they were saying that like the the, uh, the difference was just far too great for them to actually come to. Uh, or actually continue negotiations because they're mm-hmm. saying it's like four hundred and ninety million dollar difference. <laughs> yeah. In, in streaming in streaming revenue. So it's yeah, like so it's, it's only a few bucks. Yeah. That's that's uh, a <laughs> pretty big gap. Yeah, and it's just I, those streaming servers, they're they're not gonna give up that money, man. It's just dirty bastards. It's it's, it's too much. That's way too much money to but anyway, we'll see what happens. Hopefully it all works out. And hopefully it all works out soon. God damn it. God damn it. <sighs> See, now I'm down. 
Oh, oh here, here, we'll bring it back up. We'll bring up the flavor. All right. We were just talking about the Sutter Kane stuff at New York Comic Con. Here we go. We got some uh, some photos from the event to share with the audience. So let's All right. cue the photos. Here let's we go. Them. There they are. There, there they are. There's the books that I, yeah. I was talking about. The actual books that they used in the Mouth of Madness. So that's, that's, pretty, cool. that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Uh, what else we got here? Some other props and stuff that we were talking about. That'd be cool. Man. Yeah, that was sick too. Nice. So, very, very cool setup that they had there. And, uh, you mm -hmm. know, Carp Carpenter stuff is always uh, top notch. So. I didn't even know that Carpenter was doing a graphic novel and shit right now. Oh, he's got he's got like a whole series of, of books. Uh, I can't remember the name of the the gimmick. He had that one Joker book sitting there. The Joker. The Joker. This was one of my favorites. Nice. The Clown Prince is in. Oh yeah. There you go. Uh, a little uh, little peek. I'll say you Chuck, Chuck can show those pics to Dak whenever he's done. Yep. A, little, a little peek at what transpired over the weekend in New York City. A small little taste. Hope you enjoyed. Yes. So it was a ton of stuff I've never seen. Uh, oh, my gosh. It was never ending. A little yeah. slice of heaven. It was a good time. Because yeah, we were up. we were saying, I mean, we were there for what about ten hours that day, and uh, I was just like, Jesus, if you were here all four days, could you even see everything? And Mike was like, No, no probably sure not. No, you can't. There's just so much stuff that goes on there. Uh, if you've never gone before, I suggest you experience it at least once. Um, just everything from comics, film, entertainment, um, art, you name it. Trading cards, uh, Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z, uh, all kinds of different stuff. You don't have to just be a comic book fan. You can go there and and they have panels. You can and meet uh, celebrities, uh, different um, people doing autograph signings, stuff like that. So something for everybody. So definitely worth checking out. So New York Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con is the same way. Two of the biggest and best that are out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're on this weekend. It was definitely an uh, an experience, and um, like some of the panels, they we saw an advanced screening of um an episode of Chucky, the series. That was a lot of fun. Um, I mean, just everything. It's just never ending. You kind of don't want to leave <laughs> when it's all over. Yeah, you do have to get some food that's cheaper. Well, that's true. <laughs> For, for $40 for a bottle of water. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't that much, but it's close. Yeah. They, they, they gouge you a little bit. All right. All right. So let's go on to our film for the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2006 cult classic horror slasher. A little bit of comedy, I think. Hatchet, sure. ladies and gentlemen. Um, Hatchet. Wow, had a very limited release. It did not do it had a theatrical run and it did not do well. I believe it brought in about 200 grand. Um, like three. Uh, out of a budget of million and a half, I believe it had. So I guess the next question is how the hell did they have any sequels to this movie? Well, we were talking about John Carpenter earlier, and much like John Carpenter's films kind of found their voice, kind of found their audience in home video. And that was the case here, as when Hatchet came out on video, it, uh, what, about $8 million worth of fucking um, copies of the film it made? I mean, it just blew up and instantly became a classic among horror fans. Uh, they spawned Hatchet 2, Hatchet 3, Victor Crowley. I believe there was a comic book series as well that came out. Um, but before we dive in... Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't seen this movie at all, or, or if you're like me and you haven't seen this movie in a really long time, I don't think I've seen this movie for God, I'm old. 
I think I saw it a couple years after it came out. And that was the only time I saw it. So it was really cool to go back and, and watch this movie again. Revisit. Yes. I've watched Revisit. so many times. Like the original, I've watched so much. I love it. I love this movie. It's, it's really weird. good. And uh, amazing cameos, uh, like we mentioned. Robert, <laughs> Robert England has a great little part. Samson. <laughs> Samson. <laughs> Fucking alligator hunter. Um, Tony Todd, I think, had a great part. Mike, I could totally picture you in, in that part for some reason. I don't know why. As soon as he burst through the door, I just pictured Mike. Something uh, <laughs> like, "What's the line? Get, get, watch, watch, go, watch, walking down the steps, you cocksucker." Sidewalk. <laughs> sidewalk. Yeah, sidewalk. 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 That's good shit, pal. I would want to play the tour guide. Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> the uh, Asian guy, yeah, yeah. Perry, Perry Shen, Perry Shen, yeah, who makes a who, who's in the whole franchise. He is, and he plays three different characters. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. Um, does well. I was going to ask if Nasty had a synopsis, but that, <laughs> he, he's just like I don't fuck it though. He just bounced. I don't know. I don't know what's happening right now. I thought he went to go get the movie, but oh, maybe he did. He, well, perhaps he did. Perhaps. Well, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead with it. Uh, hatchet. The plot follows a group of tourists on a New Orleans haunted swamp tour. They accidentally get stranded in the wilderness, only to be hunted by a vengeful, supernatural, deformed man who kills anyone that enters the swamp. That's you. <laughs> That's your cue, Daddy. <laughs> you sound you sound like fucking uh, Jack Nicholson is shining, Daddy. <laughs> I even got the fucking I'm coming for you. <laughs> so, gentlemen, yes. What are, what what are your memories of this um of this cult classic film that's become so I've beloved always... over the years? I've always liked the fact that uh, it, it's one of those independent horror films that feels like a horror film. Like it, 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 you can tell that it was made by a fan of horror, right. you know, and because it, it, it incorporates all these different aspects from the whole genre of horror. You know, it has all these callbacks, these homages to all the different franchises. It brings in the actors from all these different franchises and, and kind of, you know, this was 2006 and then the other films are like 2010, 2013. So once all these other actors have already had their, their time in the, in the, uh, the limelight, now they're bringing them back and it's nice to see them again in a different role. Mm -hmm. And um, just, just to be able to have those characters again, it, it's very cool to see. So I always like the fact that they had that, you know, um, what's his name? Adam, Adam Green that, that did the film. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he did the whole franchise <laughs> and you could tell this guy is like a straight up horror fan mm -hmm. and he wanted to, he wanted to do it justice. So, you know, it's not the high budget bullshit stuff that comes from the studios. It's an indie horror flick, flick made by an indie horror fan. So what's he even it's also about? go ahead. Uh, I just was going to say that, like, when I first saw this movie, I instantly loved it because it is the perfect uh, combination of, 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 a, of a horror comedy. Because, it, it, like, the, the parts that are supposed to be funny are hilarious. And the parts that are supposed to be, like, gory are very disgusting. Like, it, it's, I don't know. And, I, I, and plus, not to mention the fact, it's just called Hatchet. Simple, to the point, I, I don't know. It's, although, it's good. Great. although he does use a hatchet, if, as you can see in the, the the still photo from the promotional stuff, it's it's a double bit axe. <laughs> it's not a hatchet. I've never understood this. I don't know. It's the weirdest thing. It's the same thing that goes for like ICP. Their their logo is the hatchet man, but he's carrying a fucking meat cleaver. Why does everybody fuck it, fuck up what a hatchet is? A right. hatchet is like a small little axe. <laughs> it, it's not this double it's bit like axe. This. It's like, no, but you got a hatchet about here. in the mm -hmm. face. Yeah. So his hatchet face. So but well, that's the funny thing about it though. Like Adam Green said, whenever he was, I think, eight years old, 
he went to this fucking like ca- summer camp or whatever. And then like all the counselors were like, don't go over to that house because hatchet face will get you. So then like he like told all, like, all the other like campers that were there, like, we can't go any, we can't do anything as hatchet face is gonna get us, blah, blah, blah. So he like made this fucked up story that like his dad, like his house caught on fire and his dad was trying to get in and he fucking chopped him in the head with a with a hatchet and then everybody was just freaking the fuck out. So he pretty much wrote this movie whenever he was eight years old. But you can see how <laughs> it's called hatchet, but in the pictures, it's, oh, it's definitely bit an axe. axe. But, but yes, eh. hatchet is included in the film. So it's not completely lost in translation. Well, the two times he's holding the hatchet, he gets a fucking gardening tool to the back of the head. And then the other one is whenever he gets shot. Hmm. Yeah. Hatchet face. Then the rest of the time, he's just fucking using anything and everything. The best scenes with the sander. Where do you get, where do you get a chainsaw that big? Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think, yeah. I think that when Hatchet came out, in a lot of ways, it was a breath of fresh air for me. Because mm-hmm. at the time, movie like horror movies and stuff, there wasn't really that many good ones. And I had a buddy that happened to have a copy of it. He's like, you ever seen this? And I'm like, no. Because you should watch it. So I did. And I was like, this movie's fucking great. <laughs> uh, I've actually owned it twice now because I've watched it so much. I do love this movie. Just because I mean it, it's perfect. I mean, if you're if you're a fan of slasher films, uh, especially if you're a fan of you know of you know Friday the Thirteenth and shit. I mean, Victor Crowley is. I mean, it's Kane Hodder playing him, so he's gonna definitely kind of come off like Jason Voorhees. Or, so you know, you can't can't kind of you kind of can't get away from that. He's the Cajun Voorhees, you know. Uh, but uh, there's so many great kills in this movie that made me so happy because it's like, oh, they can do that still. Because at the time, you know, again, everybody, there, there was like, you know, knife cuttings, things like this. And Victor Crowley was like ripping people's jaws open. Like, I mean, <laughs> uh, I, it's great. I, the, I, the characters in this movie are great, too. I mean, because you got an uh, old dude, um, the skinny white dude that was in Grandma's Boy. What's his fucking name? Joel um, David Moore. Yeah. With this character in the movie. Ben. ben. Okay. Like he's 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 the perfect. Like we all know that guy. Okay. We all we all know that guy. We also we all know the other guy. The one's oh come on man, no big deal, go oh, oh, whatever. Like they're so realistic and but and they're so funny how they are with shit. Like we just like trying to hit on the girl on, on the boat and she's just totally not happy because she's there for totally other reasons. And like I, I don't know. I, I the the Bill Murray's brother being in it. Being the oh, brother, that's right. You know, yeah. Um, always <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe Bur- Joe Burry shows up too, which uh, caught me by surprise. I was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, like and That's those great. girls, and those girls, like you know, on camera, they're all like, "Ooh,", ooh and then off camera, they hate each other. And I love yeah. the fact that they did that because it made it even better, like as a joke. Mm-hmm. And like when his friend is hitting on the one chick, and she starts like itching herself, and like I don't know, it just cracks me up every time. He's just like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna get some." He's just like, "Ooh." Wait a minute. It's just funny too because right before that happens, before they go on that trip, they're like talking about how he got crabs the one time when they went out. He's like, she was scratching all night. And he's like, man, she said it was a rash from her fabric softener. Yeah. (laughs) And then he sees the girl on the bus scratching and he's He's like, like, uh, damn it. (laughs) Yeah. On the the board, he looks over. (laughs) It's such a great shot Uh, of her just like reaching between her legs and scratching. uh, It's like, damn. And you know who that is, right? The girl? No, the, the guy. guy. Dion Richmond. <laughs> yeah. Bud. Bud. <laughs> from, the, from the Cosby show. Oh, oh yeah. Shit. I did not know that. Yeah. yeah. Know. That makes it even know. funnier. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's great. No, I did not know that. <laughs> I mean, he, he, did, he did a great job like, uh, of having like, characters. Like, you, you, you feel like you know these characters. Even down to the old, the, you know, the old couple. Like, you know, like they're hilarious. That mm-hmm. guy, actually, both of them, everything they're, they're in, they're usually pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, you know, which is kind of why you felt bad because they, they both of them get really horrible deaths. But, yeah. But I, I, I just, I love it. I mean, it's, it's just, it's, I don't know. It's, it's kind of like one of like the, like the, in the past, 
however long the movie's been fucking out, it's like one of my favorites just because like it, it actually stays true. Like you said, it was made by a horror fan and a slasher fan, all that shit. Like it's kind of stayed true to everything we love about it. And that's why like, I don't really hear too many people bad mouthing Hatchet unless they're just being trolled. No. What, I mean, it's, it's, it's the perfect slasher film in my eyes. Like, you got everything. I mean, you got the party element. You got some titties. You got straight mm-hmm. up people getting mutilated. Like, that's everything that's a slasher evil. film is. It's the key yeah, element for sure. And you combine that, like I said, with all the homages and, and the callbacks to all the different franchises. And it just, it's just a, a perfect recipe for a horror film, mm-hmm. you know, oh, yeah. especially independent yeah, uh, I mean, not not everything needs to be The Exorcist. Not everything needs to be, um, you know. Th- just just stick to the basics. It just it, it's it's a lot like with me personally. It's a lot like the Terrifier. It it's fun. I just this is just the type of movie I want to watch sometimes. Yeah, yeah, that's sure. all. And the three Bs. There you go. Follow the three the three Bs: boobs, blood, and bullshit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Perfect. That's it. Word. That's it. Uh, Whitman, what? Are you okay? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I was just checking. <laughs> <laughs> I just did. I, I did. I, yeah. I didn't want to talk over you if you had some thoughts because I'm sure you do. I'm sure you love this movie too. Uh oh. <laughs> No, I do. It's uh, it's good. I just haven't seen it in a long time, but we watched part two and three last night. Mm-hmm. And uh, they kind of carry on the same. All that's good about the first one. Yeah. You know, it's just like the crazy kills, the the goofball kind of, you know, just crazy humor kind of stuck in there. And uh, so I think the whole, I know we're not really talking about two and three necessarily, but I think the whole, uh, franchise holds up pretty well. I haven't seen Victor Crowley. I don't. It, even, it's not. It's not. I don't even know. It so, kind of it kind of keeps you the same kind of like right. Types. So if you like the first one, you know it's going to be something you can watch any of those and just kind of put them on. And I had a blast watching them. Another night. I hadn't seen uh, the very end of part three, and I mean, it's been forever since I've watched pretty much any of these movies. And yeah, same. Uh, it, it was it was a fun trip last night. But, sure. Yeah, all yeah. of them were fun, man. Yeah. And when when I got into the Hatchet movies, another, another franchise I got to throw out that that are similar uh, is the Feast trilogy. Remember those movies? Yeah. See that. Yeah. Um, very similar. I mean, like the humor is on yeah. like a one hundred. The fucking gore is on one hundred. <laughs> yeah. Um, like it, they're both them. Like you like you could do a double feature of the, both first movies. And it would be perfect. You know, you can, it's just they're kind of like you know. Uh, uh, the perfect type of like slasher gore film, you know. The thing that that these have that it doesn't is like a character. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like the Feast movies, it's just the monsters. You just right. you know whatever. But this, you have like a new slasher. You know, right. we were talking. We were kind of hoping it would have picked up a little more. Yeah, or like been a I don't know, maybe more popular franchise, but or a character anyway. Yeah, but I mean, I I I don't know why why. It didn't, and maybe it's just where it's supposed to be because a lot of people. Do I was going to say, you know, I thought about that for a long time. I was like, why didn't Victor Crowley, as a, a character, really take off uh, like the other horror characters in, in history? You know, uh, maybe it just—I don't know. It, he was just a monster and didn't really have the personality or whatever. Yeah. I mean, even yeah. even with Art the Clown, mm-hmm. you know, the first film really didn't take off or anything. It wasn't until the second film right. that he really became a, a staple and, and kind of uh, iconic character. But, you know, even though with four films under the belt, Victor Crowley uh, doesn't get the love that he probably deserves. And uh, I'm not sure. What, what would you think the reason is? Just because it's the character yes. is just a, I, a monster? Yes. I think he's harder to market than yeah. maybe some of the others. That's all. Because it's like, you know, you got Jason, you got Michael. You, you could put on masks. Yeah. You know, and be those characters. You know, being Victor Crowley isn't. You know, it's like, oh, I'm just all deformed and fucked up looking. Yeah. Right. So it's not. It's it's just a different feel to it or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, you know, it doesn't doesn't take away from the films in any way. No, I, don't I, think, I, I think that's all it is. I think it's just the the marketing. 
It, he's yeah. harder to market than somebody like Freddie and especially Jason. Cause Jason, I always like it too. If, if you hand a kid uh, a pencil and a piece of paper, can they draw the character? Any kid can draw the hockey mask. You know, I used to draw Freddie all the time. Um, Michael Myers, of course, uh, just the shape, but Victor Doesn't Crowley, I, I, I feel like it's a little different. You know, Freddie's all scarred up, but he has his hat. That's really iconic his of, of his face. You know, he's got yeah. his glove or whatever, but his yeah. hat is just a really iconic piece of his. I always made yeah. it easier to draw when I was a kid. It was just like, yeah. oh, right, he put his hat on. And yeah. 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 And if, you had, if you had the hat and the colored sweater yeah. and the glove, people know it's yeah. Freddie. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, mean, I, well, I mean, one of the reasons that, that I love, another reason why I love this movie is like, I'm a sucker for like, Hills Have Eyes, Wrong Turn, mm -hmm. you know, Backwoods, like, you know, that kind of shit. Um, it's a big reason I think Edward Lee's my favorite writers. Um, but and, and this one adds like a super supernatural element to like wrong turn kind of, you know, because he's like, he's, he's a ghost, but, he, but he's not. Kinda. He's a repeater. He's a, re he's, he's a repeater. Yeah, uh, is that actually? He's a repeater. Is that term actually used in the movies? Is that term actually used in the movies? Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, okay, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but anyway, he's doing, anyway, he's, he's like, doing I mean, repeater. He's I think that, like that also was a reason why I didn't really get that that big of a, of a following like till later on was the fact that like. You know, it's just a it's a it's a backwards horror movie in a lot of ways. Sure. You know, so a lot of people clump that kind of same kind of shit in with wrong turn and yells have eyes and all that shit. But again, I'm a sucker for those fucking movies too. So Yeah, if you're gonna have like a monster that really doesn't talk or has any personality per se, uh you gotta do something else. It's it's like you know, like we were saying with Freddie, he's got the personality, so you don't have to do anything extra. Michael Myers, Jason, Leatherface, they don't talk. They don't got the personality, but you can just put on the mask and become that character. Yeah. And that's not – you can't really do that with Crowley. And I think that's uh, kind of the takeaway there where it's like, you know, the disconnect where mm, you, you need like a mask or something. I don't know. It, uh, yeah. You could you – could, I mean uh, – you could have gave him a mask, but it would have felt too much like Friday the Thirteenth yeah. putting like the yeah. potato sack over him, and then mm -hmm. like oh, I'm all fucked up looking. Because that would so, be the only thing know. you could really fit over his fucking weird ass head. Yeah, you know, yeah, fucking, you know, pillowcase, and that's still. What's wrong with his head? It's pillowcase. <laughs> There's a book series called Pillow Face, but it's in the green room. And the Not poker, um, all all the great kills in the in the film. Uh, you, <laughs> I always thought of Evil Dead with the blood, yeah. just that yeah. spray blood coming yeah. out. Dude, and these outrageous kills. I mean, when when he throws her body on the what was it, it was a pitchfork, right? Yeah. That that stick it in, and he just plows her into it. It doesn't stop there. He keeps pushing her down into it. And uh, my favorite is the. Um, who was the dude? Was he in the Cosby show? You said, yeah, yeah. yeah when, you know, when he gets his arms torn off and just, yeah, they just go nuts dude, with the kills. They have creative the standard, kills and the sander that girl's jaw was. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And then she oh, still loved. Ouch. Yeah, Dion Richmond, not to be confused with Dulé Hill. No. Okay. <laughs> but, but I didn't say. But, I'm not bud. Oh wow, that's that's so wild. I didn't know that. That's great. Um, and yeah, so, yeah. So many in, inventive, creative kills. You know, they you can uh, tell that Green and those guys had a, a ton of fun. Yeah, coming up with that, that's oh, exactly yeah. what I was gonna say. I was gonna say and the same it, thing. Yep. It, every time it, I see it, it cracks me up. Whenever <laughs> it's it's a shot. Whenever he starts killing somebody. You can clearly tell that somebody just took a bucket of, of <laughs> fake blood and just threw it on a tree. Just heaves it because <laughs> yeah, you see the shot and then it just like a like a little it wave of me blood. Up. Yeah, I'm like they just they're just throwing that. It makes me laugh. <laughs> yeah, great. it's great, and that's what I like sometimes. Just a fun horror movie. I, I don't I don't want to overthink it. I, I don't want to. Oh, Mandy says hi. 
Hello. Hello, Mandy. Welcome to the store. Howdy, howdy. Howdy, ho. <laughs> I knew that was coming yeah, Richard, somehow. <laughs> Richard Riley as the old man from the couple. <laughs> yeah, the dude's was, like, uh, what was the name of that porn site uh, or whatever? Uh, the videos? Oh, uh, uh, Bayou Beavers? Yeah, he's like, have you seen Bayou <laughs> Beavers? And he's like, yeah. And his wife's like, no. And he's like, no. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> even in so much stuff he was he was in he was the uh the fucking banker in casino yeah remember yeah. that joe pesci threatened yeah and then he's uh he's the fucking uh old dude from uh office, office, space. office space yeah that's right yeah uh, uh, what the fuck the uh oh the, is, is, he, is he the one that gets hit the by jump the... to conclusions matt Jump to conclusions, yeah. Matt. That's what it was. Uh, <laughs> it's got plenty of conclusions. It's a jump. You can jump to it. <laughs> it's a jump to conclusions, Matt. It's yeah, <laughs> it's great. Like so, uh, so many fun cameos, so many good, uh, great uh, death scenes. I mean, it's it's just, I, I love it. I love it. I love this. One movie. thing I found interesting about it was talking about the cameos. Tony Todd in the first one is his cameo is really small, right? Uh, but was, but it but you remember it. Christmas. And, yeah, uh, Reverend Zombie. Yeah, he's not even he's not actually even there. They didn't film that with him there. He filmed it somewhere else and they had to work it into the shot. Like it so he's not out. actually there when they're filmed, like when they filmed it. Yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting they did that. I'm just glad he came back for the se- like for the sequels though. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I, I love and Tony Todd, anything that he's in, like I'm just kinda like, oh man, I'm there for that guy's acting. Oh yeah. He's, right. he's a smart ass. But in this one, and, he's kind of a nuisance to everybody. Like he's not like in, in in this franchise, he's not like the the big. Everybody's like, whatever, dude. Like you're just so full of shit. And I think it's hilarious because he still plays off very well off of it, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, and there really is. I mean, that that's something else also. Like with the cameos, like there really is a shit ton of people throughout yeah. these movies. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you if you even especially going like to two and three. If you start going down the line and just like working down who all's been in this movie and that movie and all that shit, I mean, it's the list is long. I mean, I Rob Zombie did the same thing pretty much, but Adam Green pretty much kind of like upped it a little bit with uh, with just the Hatchet movies when it came down For to sure. kind of bringing some of the, the the old school back. You know, even the hilarious part with Sid Haig in the, in the third one. Yep. Yeah, Sid Haig. Caroline Williams. Yep. Oh man, that was that was another thing. I remember watching uh, the third film, and uh, when Caroline Williams shows up and, and Sid Haig's there, I I was like, "Fuck, man! How great would it have been if they would have been able to get Bill Mosley in to have him and Caroline Williams on screen together again? You know, the Chop Top and right. Stretch reunion. Yeah. That would have been fucking dope." But uh, he's going to be at Scarefest that we're going to this weekend. Yep. Yep. Mosley, and let's guy. let's not forget our girl. Danielle Harris, she yes, she, she comes back as an uh, old old girl from the first one, and she yeah. uh, Re- she's an interesting. The, the, mo- yeah, the most I'm all right with that recasting. The most interesting thing: Victor Crowley has the power to squeeze somebody so hard that they turn into a different actress. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes shorter. It nice. goes from Tamara Feldman in the first one to our friend Danielle Harris, but you know. It makes sense. Tamara Feldman, you know. Whatever. Danielle's also going to be a scare for us. Hmm. She, she sure. killed it too in, in the sequels. Yeah. She she always does good when it comes to in, oh, yeah. in the crazy, frantic female lead role. Sure. And, oh, yeah. Well, hey, we got to love Daniel Harris, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how could you not? How could you not? How could you not? No. Yes. Are you not entertained? <laughs> but it, yeah, and especially with with, the, with Tony Todd, I, I, it looked like everyone, all the actors, were just having fun, and yeah. that comes off on screen. And I love to see that too. I mean, you had in, in the second one. Guar. Yeah, her walking through the swamp while fucking Guar playing in the. Oh, oh yeah, sure. I mean that's and then the soundtracks were good. I mean you had Manson in the opening of the first one, I think, and you had Ministry on the second one, I think. Yeah. Like, come on. I mean, yeah. and Guar also was a part of Adam Green's TV show, Holliston, which was pretty cool. 
it was a pretty funny show for the most part. It, it had a uh, uh, Otis Arungus was his uh, imaginary friend in the show. And uh, they also had like, cause it's about these two, these guys who were like filmmakers basically based off them. And they have like all like Tony Todd shows up on it. Just, yeah, pretty, pretty fun show. I don't really know where you can find it now, but yeah. What's it called? Holliston? Yeah. Uh, it might be on Shudder, actually. Might be on Shudder, you know, Tubi, some of that. Have you all ever Tubi. watched that show? Tubi. I've never, I've never seen it. Really? Oh, you need to check that out. It's fucking stupid funny. Oh, and Dee Snyder's in it, too. Oh, nice. He's, uh, but he's like uber, like, oh, he's Dee Snyder. I was gonna say <laughs> uber ridiculous. So I'm like, he's he's decent. Like, wait a minute, that's him. That's just he's not man. I did like Strange Land. That's another one I haven't seen in a long ass that's time. That's a good movie. Man, I, that one good. I need to go back and rewatch it because I'll be perfectly honest. I never was a fan. I used to like Strange Land a lot, and we used to watch it in my old house all the time. And yeah. I, I think it's a super underrated. I think he could have done some cool stuff with that character of Captain Howdy. He didn't really do anything, though. He didn't do anything. I don't know. Man, I need to, I need to go read back and watch it. it just, yeah, me, me too. It, I'm sure it's been a good, like, 20 years since I've, I've seen that. No, I wanted to like it, but, you know. But, yeah, Holliston, to check that shit out. It's a good one. It's funny. It's a funny show. I just got to remember where it's at. But this one again, and that, that's why I love doing this show because there's a lot of times there's movies I haven't seen in such a long time of them as forgotten yeah. about. And, and that was this one too, man. I I, I I forgot how funny it was, how much fun it was. Um, Yeah, I love it. It's Good a shit, it, pal. And, and not just the film, the whole franchise. It, it's one of the mm, few yeah. Yeah. franchises in the last like 15 years or so that I enjoy. It, like this... I think this one and uh, the the X Pearl uh, franchise that's going on right now, yeah, uh, those are like two of my favorites from the last fifteen years, probably because it's like you watch Hatchet <laughs> two, three, and they get better in each one because it's like you have the first one with the format we talked about, but it's like you go to the second one and it's it's even more entertaining, and the third one is just over the top entertaining. You know, it's it's so funny. <laughs> And all the I just love seeing all the cameos, like yeah, so many, so many. Oh. Lloyd Lloyd Kaufman in, in part two, just oh, yeah. like, hanging out as a hunter, uh, just little shit like that. Zach Galligan mm -hmm. from uh, Gremlins as the oh, sheriff yeah. in the third one. Yeah. Uh, Ari Millahoff. Yep, as uh, one of the one of the hunters. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and so and many the, cool cameos. Yeah, that's why you get the sense it's like. Hey, let's all get together and make a horror movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and and that's what it feels like, and that's what comes off on screen. I'm sorry, Mandy. Which movie were you talking about? Strange Land. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. I'm I'm pretty sure it's what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, but see, and, like, and going back to the uh, talking about how you know there's four movies in the franchise, and all four of them are pretty damn good. They all keep to the same thing as the original for the most part. Uh, there's a little something fresh and new in each one of them without going and straying away too much. And I can watch any of them be fine. You know what I mean? Like, I, I like them all. Because usually when you get about the second or third movie, it starts to get a little hokey, starts to be, get a certain point. Well, this movie's already got the hokey to it, but you're wanting it. So it's yeah. like it can, yeah. anything that can actually be bad, it's, it's, it's good. Does that, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So it just it, it just works. While there's other movies out there where it's like by the third one, you're just kind of like, all right, I'm already tired of this, you know, or like, okay, we need another one. And I was worried that Victor Crowley was going to be like that, where it was like, eh, like there really was no point for it to be made, but it's still not a bad movie. It's still good. Right. Still, so it has a pretty good story to it, you know. So I, I think that has a lot to be said to it when a lot of movies don't hold up after the first. one. Yeah, it, you don't really lose any steam throughout these films, mm -hmm. you know? and it, yeah. it's like they they follow the format correctly, and it's it, it, it's enjoyable the whole time. And Danielle Harris, I think, even <laughs> said that they had uh, had two more films slated to come out. You know, this was back in like 2020, so I don't know if that got shelved after the pandemic situation or, or what. But uh, you know, it, it was still up and kicking. Yeah, because nobody even knew they were filming Victor Crowley whenever it came out. It just kind of fucking popped out. 
Yeah. Yeah, I had no idea. I was like, this is a new one? Yeah, uh, 20, 2017, yeah. I believe that came out. Yeah, He didn't even want to do it. Green didn't want to do it. Um, He was at like some convention, and George Romero convinced him to do it. Yeah, he, I guess he was talking to George Damn. Romero back before he passed away, you know, and yeah. um, he he's the one who convinced Green to start back the franchise. So there you go. Well, if the zombie I mean, father says do it, do it. Yeah, right. I mean, if there's anybody, right. can, if there's anybody can tell you to, to make it, a movie, yeah. you know, that's that's like you know him, John Carpenter. That's enough motivation right there. You mm -hmm. know, sure. Yeah, sorry. I, I Facebook sometimes the comments get a little delayed like that. So sorry about that. It's always the Facebook. Now this always this movie great. for me is just really fun. Like I know uh, I was watching some of the interviews with Kane, and he said some of his favorite kills ever in his career are in this movie. Oh yeah, yeah. No he said he just had so much fun just tearing shit apart and being set on fire, and he's like, it was everything that I. I imagine a set should be. He's like, we all just had fun. We were all fans of horror movies. Yeah. He's like, we all just sat around and just hung out and bullshitted and shit whenever they were just hanging out on set. You can't. Yeah, yeah. That's the way it should be. You can tell they had a good time. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a Adam Green also has a, a, a on YouTube. I can't remember what, what it's called, but it's like sleepovers scary sleepovers or something and like he said sid egg on there and daniel harris and kane otter and uh the episode with kane otter is pretty funny and you actually learn some stuff because they're talking about what movies they would have watched and kane otter is all like oh, watch my movie. like or some shit like it's funny but you learn a little bit more about that shit on there too adam green's pretty funny he's got he, he's got a pretty good sense of humor i just wish he put out something else because I don't even want to talk about Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure what other movies he did, but I, I, I do remember him saying he had five movies under his belt between parts one and two. So, I'm, not, <clears throat> I'm, not, I'm sorry. I'm not sure what they are, but... I, I, just, I just said the guy's got know, talent. We know Frozen's one of them. Yeah, and not the Frozen you're thinking of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, not the, not the children's film. <laughs> no, well, that'd, that'd be really funny if it was. Um, wanted to yeah, try something well, I, different. I just think the guy's got talent. I mean, he's 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 shown us, you know, surely the fuck he hasn't blown his whole load on, on a hatchet to where like he has nothing else better to come out with. I just would like to see more from him just because I do. I just, you know, even though Frozen was kind of a boring piece of shit, it's still somewhat watchable. But like all the Hatchet movies are great. So he's got something else in there, you know. I just kind of wish it'd be here before too long. I mean, so maybe even another Hatchet movie. movie. Who knows? I mean, I don't know. It's weird how that shit works. Yeah. I don't know how they bring him back after the, the Victor Crowley, but I, I just I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't really want there to be another like ha like Hatchet movie. Depending on what's up, I wouldn't be mad about it, but I think it's already been like the story's been told on that. You know, just come up with something different. Yeah, because I mean, by the end of it, there's just the curse that was put on him is pretty much a curse that he has to avenge everybody that was in charge of setting the fire or whatever. But then her, uh, Mary Beth's dad's brother was actually dead. Yeah. So there's no way that he could actually go back to kill him because like he's already fucking dead so that that curse can never be broke good See, it wouldn't make any sense i don't know why you can get how you can do that it wouldn't be right let it lie let it lie you know I don't know, it's all weird it, we're, i was just thinking about this over the past weekend because um when we were at comic con eli roth was supposed to have a panel for thanksgiving coming out this this year He's finally uh, has that film coming out based off of the the little uh, snippet that he did for um, oh shit uh, Quentin Tarantino Grindhouse. Grindhouse. Death Proof so, and, and he's another one where he was doing a lot of stuff there for a minute and then he just kind of you know he disappeared yeah he disappeared for a while now he's back so it's like guys are just like that you know they, they'll have a, a spurt of uh, <laughs> creativity and then uh you know whatever happens happens well, it's like Greatest you said part. too like whenever they put out a bunch of shit 
everybody expects them to. If, if they don't disappear for a while, we just really want it, and they know for a fact we'll go see it whenever they actually do put something out. We can't and miss I'm, you if you don't go away. Well, but and plus the fact that you know it's easy for us to say, oh yeah, just go and make this shit. But these yeah. guys, you know, especially trying to come up with funding for a, a independent horror film, you know, isn't easy. You know yeah, what I mean? It's tough. Yeah. It's and and this the shame is for this. Um, we were talking about earlier how it kind of found its audience once it hit uh, the DVD market and everything like that. In this day and age, there is no more DVD and Blu-ray market anymore. Um, even the, the the retail stores are phasing them out as we speak. So now it's all in the hands of streaming. And if streaming doesn't want anything to do with it, then you're fucking lost forever. You know, it's, it's yeah. one of those things where you know you you're not going to have that secondary audience that, that's that's going to buy all your DVDs and and save you. It, it's a different world. So, you know, uh -huh. it's easy it's easy for us to, to criticize and say, hey, you know, go make this or go do this. But yeah. these guys that have these great ideas and want to make some great stuff, you know, it's such a, a difficult process to actually get it in the pipeline. Yeah. yeah and, and we do see more and more a lot of fan films uh, that pop up on YouTube. Um, and and, and right. sometimes um, that's how they get discovered. But uh, yeah, you know, financing your own movie is, uh, and it's risky too, especially if you have a family. It's you know, do I put my house up? Do I max out all these credit cards? And wonder if it doesn't work. Wonder if it doesn't work. I'm, I'm me and my my family and I are fucked. So it's tough. It's it's easier said than done. I agree. Yeah, that's my point. <laughs> Man, the underground. On all levels, much respect. They even said, like, whenever he was casting, should he wanted to make sure that, like, the actors were full in because he knew it was going to be a pain in the ass to fucking shoot this thing. Because nobody wants to work from Dust Till Dawn filming a movie. Unless and you're then, in from Dust Till Dawn. Oh. Oh. But then even most of the movie was fucking filmed in California, but in the desert. So they had to make a swamp out of the fucking desert. Yeah. Huh. No easy mm. task. I think they said the only scenes filmed in New, in New Orleans was the the Bourbon Street shit whenever they had to close Bourbon Street down to film. And then whenever they went on some kind of fucking swamp tour and they just had like a camera hanging over the side of the boat yeah. to get like the opening sequences. Yeah, because you're not going to find any gators in the desert, man. Yeah. True. <laughs> They're called lizards, Mike. Oh, All right. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun so much such yeah. a, a mm -hmm. fun franchise i mean it, it just it's like so many different things crack me up you know um part three <laughs> it just popped in my head part three uh when you had um and, and i like the fact that it takes place over it's like consecutive yeah uh, i was gonna yeah, say that consecutive yeah, days too. it starts yeah. where one ends yeah because mm -hmm. it, it's so funny in three where uh, what's his face? Uh, the Ben character, Joel David Moore comes back for that, that, that small little cameo where uh, the guy's hiding by the boat and then Crowley throws the, the axe or whatever it is. And he just happens to sit up out of the boat and it hits him in the face He's, and he dies finally mm -hmm. because, you know, you don't know what happens to him. You just assume yeah. he died in the first at, at the end of the first one because he was all fucked up. But no, he was still in that boat chilling like half dead. And then he just happens to sit up right when the axe comes and hits him in the face. He's like, are you fucking kidding me? And then, fuck, <laughs> then he dies. You know, it's just so much silly stuff like that. Tony Todd is so funny in part two. Yeah. You know, where he's trying to get all these guys together to to go out there and and, and try to catch Crowley or kill Crowley, and, and he has he has uh, Perry Shen's character as the twin brother, <laughs> who's like, handing out yeah handing out chocolate chip cookies and doing all this stuff, and he's like he comes out and he's doing all this theatrics and shit for these guys, and they're just like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I don't know, it just cracks me up all the goofy shit he does. Doesn't he have like a French accent or some shit? Yeah, and the one dude's like, will you knock it the fuck off? <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that they have him at all. Give me movies. a cookie. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Makes, he makes the movies to me. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Very, very Shen. Yeah, and the third one where, where he, and the third one where where he's like he's like 
<laughs> the guy's like, you you look like the, the guy I found. He's like, why? Because we're all we're Asian. We all yeah. just look alike. <laughs> like, no, man. You really look like him. <laughs> Funny and stuff. speaking of Tony Todd, happy anniversary to Candyman, by the way. Yeah. yeah. 30, 31. One of, yeah. one of the greatest horror movies and, and like greatest stories ever written. One of the greatest movies ever made. 31 year anniversary for that. Uh, what else? Uh, shoot. They were just saying something else. Something. Oh, the, uh, the remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out. Another good one. Oh, man. One, was... 20 years today. Wow. To today. Oh, wow. 20 years. Um, and we also have the, 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 the we, we missed the 30th anniversary of Freddy versus Jason or 20th anniversary of Freddy versus Jason. Mm. Not 30. That? Not that old. We're not that old. Not yet. Oh, three. I'm getting there. So it's 20. My bad. Uh, I still feel old. House of the Thousand Corpses yeah. just had an anniversary too, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Because they, they, yeah. I think I saw something on Rob Zombie's page where they just done a uh, like a live screening of it out in California, I believe. So that's so crazy. Put it back on. Put it back on on the big screen for all the folks. I like it. So they all make me feel old. Old. Yeah. Yeah. Feel old. But still, I, I still have. All those memories engraved in my brain of all these horror movies, everything going to see uh, Nightmare 4, Jason Takes Manhattan, and going to see Freddy's Dead, and just all these horror movies are some of my best memories yeah. growing up. Sure. Sure. But Hatchet was one that kind of went under the radar. It did. So, it did. But everybody yeah. found it, and like I said again, it's it was like all of John Carpenter's movies. None of them did well at the box office, but as soon as they came out on video, they found the audience and took off. And now, like the thing, for example, is considered one of the greatest movies of all time. Oh well, yeah, well, we were just shelf life about, is long lasting. Uh -huh. Well, we were just talking about a few weeks ago with Monster Squad. You know, uh, a lot of yeah. these flicks. Yeah. They sneak through, and then they become fucking classics. Yeah, and Big Trouble in Little China, all the escape movies. Sorry, I'm got sidetracked with Carpenter. He's the one with everything. <laughs> it's easy but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all right. Um, but yeah, Boron Hatchet, um, gentlemen. Final thoughts. Great movie. If you haven't, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Definitely a must watch if you're a fan of just. Good fun for the freaks, yeah. And Gordon any more that, yeah, any more that's what I look for in a horror movie. Like I said, I don't need to see The Exorcist every time, even though that's a masterpiece. Well, I don't want to overthink anything. I don't, you know, want something that deep. <laughs> I said deep. That's what she said. If you have the time, definitely go check these movies out. Like, yeah, and all of them are good. It's, it's tis the season, and, and, and if you don't want to watch, you know, your nightmares, your Fridays, your Halloweens, all those. If you want to watch something a little different, it's only about an hour and a half long. It gets right into it. And, oh, yeah, and not slow at all. That's yeah, good, yeah, it goes quick. Yeah, yeah, it's a it, it's a it's a quick one. <laughs> like the, the slowest one I say watching wise <laughs> is probably Victor Crowley. Whenever they're on the plane, just trying to figure shit out. Once yeah. they land in the swamp. After that, once he shows up, it's fucking game on again. Yeah. yeah there's, there's not really too many breaks. I mean, it's, no, right. you know, there's like a little bit of filler, you know, because you got to know backstory and all that stuff, whatever. But it's like you're intrigued throughout the whole time watching all these movies. Um, and, yeah, you're not bored. I've never once watched these more movies and been like, nah. You know, it's like, oh, okay, this is one part. Like, there's too, too, many, too many good kills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there is like like we said like, too, like there's like a lot of goofy elements too. Like I think it's funny how as soon as they start running from him and then like they get like twenty feet away, they just stop and then they stop. just talk about it. And then, then fucking like he just stops chasing them once he, they're out of view or something. It's like what the they fuck happened? He just disappeared. Right. And fucking Marcus is hanging out, just like he climbed up in the tree. He's <laughs> like, fuck this shit. I'm staying up here. Yeah. I think one of the, I think one of the, I, I think there's a very brutal scene. I think it was the third one 
where he rips the cops arm, like the young cops' arms and legs off, mm. and like just pushes his, he takes his boot and just pushes mm-hmm. his face into face the mud. Into the mud. <laughs> and it's like, oh man, that's fucking brutal. I mean, like he's. Right. Is it part two? No, it's three. Was it three? Okay, because they kind of blend in when you watch them back and forth. Honestly, the first one, I, I know, mm-hmm. you know, but for some reason, two and three just there's moments. But yeah, I, I, for some reason, like I'm just like, ugh. I just say that's a pretty horrible way to way to die. Not only are your limbs ripped off, but now you have to drown yeah. forcefully in the muck. In the mucky muck. Even like the the I don't know, just like the goofy shit too. Like the end of the the first one, when fucking he gets that fucking spike shoved through his foot. And then they fucking push it forward <laughs> to fucking stab him through the neck. No. And then you think everything is all good and done. And then he fucking like coughs and blood splatters all over his face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, good too. That's good too. And at the end when they're on the boat, like we, um, like we mentioned the callbacks, you know, clearly a callback to the original Friday the 13th, Friday the 13th. where, you know, something, you know, he's going to jump out of the water and, but that's great. Well, my, my one favorite uh, line in this movie is never, they're all fucking, like they just get to the shore, and then fucking the old dude's like, "Is this part of the tour?" He's like, "Yeah, I sink a boat every night." Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> every time I see that scene, I just fucking crack up, fuck up laughing. So funny. Just like the way he says, he's like, "Hilarious, <laughs> hilarious." I mean, in the second one, a guy gets like strangled with his own intestines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the same that? guy that drinks his own piss. Yeah. And he keeps trying to give like that, like when he gives it to da- like Daniel Harris, and like she keeps almost drinking it. Yeah, and the, the whole time you're like, no. Oh, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Gross. And even though it was uh, John, for a John short Cracker. time, um <laughs> seeing Kane Hodder play kind of a serious, like a serious role, even though it's for a short oh, time, yeah. kind of cool. To see, I, yeah. I kind of, I feel like he could do like a serious role like that. I feel like he's I got some acting. I think he's got some acting chops in, in, in there too. That I man, that's probably the first un makeuped role he did aside un- from playing un- unmakeuped. Yeah, yeah unmakeuped. Besides that little fucking scene in uh, Jason Goes to Hell when he's one of the security guards. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, Jason, I'm about pussy anyway. Big old pussy anyway. <laughs> yeah. He has the mullet. He does have yeah. mullet. All curly. Jim curls. He's he's his own father. I'm my own grandpa. <laughs> Good shit, pal. I Man, we, we could talk about these movies for I cannot I feel like we just started the show. We I we've am, been here for over an hour. I am the walrus. Number nine. And I love it. I love shows like that where we, you know, we kind of never run out of things to talk about. Yeah. With it's, it, 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 like I said before, such a fun franchise. You know, it's a different one. You know, obviously, if you're watching us now, you've seen them before, hopefully. Um, so, you know, it's, it's that time of the year. Throw it in, you know, make it one of the ones you watch, you know, back to back to back. Have fun with it. Because yeah. you're gonna you're gonna get the gore, you're gonna get the comedy. It's gonna be entertaining as hell. Uh, it beats the hell out of a lot of other stuff. So get, get the popcorn out, man. And do a marathon, man. Yep. It's yeah. that fun time, you know. You can watch all three. Like if you watch a couple, you know, each night, you know, or if you just watch, you know, all of them in one day. It's a fun time. Hell, you can make a drinking game. I've done it. It's dangerous. What's but, the drinking game? Yes, do tell. Oh, it's uh, I can't really. Uh, yeah, it was actually, <laughs> it, it, oh, okay. it's pretty much like well, it's like like it, it's not just weed or not just like whiskey and beer, but there's like like all right, like if every time somebody dies, you take a shot of like whiskey and you take a shot of beer, but if like if somebody dies with a power tool, you take two shots of whiskey and bong hit like that kind of shit. You know That's what I mean? Cool. So it's like if you do this repeatedly. Uh, while watching all these movies, you might die, uh, but um, you're gonna have a great time doing it. So, yeah, be safe, drink responsible. (laughs) 
All right. So there you have it, man. Hatchet, highly, highly recommend, yeah. uh, certainly for this time of year. But hey, I, I think you could pop this movie in anytime if you're looking for something different. Just a fun horror movie. Not, not, nothing too crazy. You don't have to overthink it. Just, just enjoy it, man. And that's yeah. what it's all about. Yeah. Prop, prop, props to Adam Green. Props to Keen Hodder, Danielle Harris. Definitely. Definitely uh, made this franchise what it is. For sure. For sure. All right. With that in mind, it's time for our random clip of the week, ladies and gentlemen. Hmm. So we're going to fire up the generator and see what we got. What do we got? Let's uh, see what uh, if uh, we uh, get canceled yeah. this week. I don't know if you've seen this one. <laughs> hey. Is this Five Nights at Freddy's? That's the worst werewolf transformation of all the best. And then he disappeared. <laughs> he te no, he teleported. Clear clearly, th he teleported. Beat me up, Scotty. I promise you, we've never seen that one. <laughs> I've seen that. I've seen that. <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if we played it on television in the podcast when I was on there or what, but I've seen that clip before. Like that's. I don't. I can't remember. Like you just. I, I. I don't know. That's horrible though. Have all. <laughs> have all the cool ways in movies to make a man turn to a wolf. That's not one of them. It definitely wasn't the Monster Squad. I'll say that. Right. Right. Yeah. Hungry like the wolf. All right, gentlemen, does anybody have anything going on in their lives they want to share with the internet? Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, you, you, got, you got all the links and everything, right? Links yeah. are in the description, my friend. Always. Right. So, uh, got some books out on, uh, on Amazon there. Uh, got uh, Thirsty and House of Flesh and Sludge, which is the anthology I do with Stuart Bray and Jason Dickey. Um, and, you know, go on Amazon and so get that shit on there. Uh, available in paperback and in ebooks. Uh, you can go on Limited or wherever. Um, Bachelor Sons with Judas Goat. We got some new stuff coming out. Uh, our recent show, our set we did at Mountains of Metal, is on Facebook. You can check that shit out. Um, and just go to the Facebooks. Graveyard Talk. Me and this guy's uh, a podcast we do. Hit us up on Facebook. Get all the links to everything you need, all our shows, everything on there. Uh, but you can also look us up on Spotify and Anchor too. But all that shit gets posted on, on there. Um, yeah, we got, uh, I got a shoot with uh, Miss Jessica Flux next week. Finally Ooh. got that rescheduled, and uh, we're going to Scarefest this weekend. So we'll report back on the, any kind of cool shit we find or see or talk to. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. we'll try to be as cool as you are with it. But I probably won't. <laughs> it's some footage. Yeah, I'll just try. Yeah. In charge. And Jess Flux, if you don't know, is um uh, one of the stars of the recent Murder Size. Yeah. Murder Size movie directed by Paul Ragsdale, I believe. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's actually doing start, pretty good. Yeah. Want to make sure yeah. I got his name right. The yeah. worst thing is ever like getting somebody's name wrong or mispronouncing somebody's name. I hate doing that. So I want to make sure I got it right. Yeah. yeah, definitely. That's definitely one to go check out. It's pretty fun. I'm actually going to Indiana tomorrow. Uh, Jess is playing in her hometown. It's actually Henderson, Kentucky, but it's like right on the border. And so uh, I'm riding up tomorrow. Yeah, we're playing, or she's playing on a, like a local theater up there. So we're nice. going to check that out. All right. Very cool. Well, before we depart, um, we'll be doing something next week. As the most wonderful time of the year continues, what are we doing next week? Cat dead. Details later. Uh -oh. Yeah, later. Yep. Only, only one of the greatest movies. Yeah. 
And uh, I believe Mr. Jeff Baldry from Skewer Universe tells the podcast is going to join us for that one. Excellent. The more the merrier, brother. The more the scarier. (laughs) (laughs) Until then, don't forget to check us out on YouTube. Like, subscribe at Video Store Clerks. We're also on Facebook at Video Store Podcast. Instagram, Twitter, all that happy stuff. Once again, all the links are in the description for us and all these wonderful faces you see here. So what until up, then. Wait. I was gonna <laughs> I, I thought we were gonna do outros. But anyway, I was gonna, one more thing before we go. I wanted to give a shout out to uh Michelle and Tamara, who we met over at uh, Monster Mania this weekend. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> shout out. Go check out Michelle yeah. Omilio. Yeah. On the YouTube. Yeah. Subscribe to their channel Inter- as well. You're interesting. Inter- yes, interesting yes, spoof yes. videos. Yes. 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 Fun. Yes. A lot of fun. So make sure you check that and, out. And, and I, 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 I got more. God damn it. Wait. There's more. <laughs> there's more. There's more. Can go over and check out uh, Jameson Newlanders. Uh, channel on YouTube. Go ahead and like and subscribe for his stuff. Uh, we met him over the weekend at Monster Mania. Him and Corey Feldman, the Frog Brothers from the Lost Boys. Uh, very cool. He's 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 working on getting his channel up and going. He's going to do some stuff. He's been doing uh, filming some stuff on there for a uh, like a Lost Boys filming location and everything like that. Uh, they're they're looking to get uh, something done up uh, with the the house, the Grandpa's house uh, from the the film. Uh, they want to. Revitalize and hopefully turn it into something. So um, more for the, from that to come, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, go over Jameson Newlander on uh, on YouTube. Go ahead and uh, subscribe to him. Good guy. Excellent, fantastic. Yes, we have a lot more on the way as well. So Super once nice again, guy. subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned. There's a lot more to come. Until then, next week, Reanimator. We'll see you next Tuesday. Daddy. <laughs> <laughs>